how to build an altar of um, prayer. This is going to be a very powerful video. The title of this video is how to build an altar of prayer. Now, everything that I do is saturated with the word of God, but there's two key things that I'm going to highlight that you need um, concerning prayer. Two very key things, holiness and confidence. There's also spiritual protocol when you're praying. Now, before I get into these Bible verses, something that I do regularly is a lot of times people will say to me, can you please pray for me? When they say this, God will give me a download of revelation concerning the person. A lot of times, um, when people speak to me about prayer, God will begin to tell me how faulty they are, how they play victim, how a lot of these people are not saved. People get deeply offended when I begin to tell them this, because here's what you need to understand. You may need prayer at that time, but the bigger issue lies in how you live your adult life on a daily and consistent basis, how much time you spend in the word, how often do you pray? I'm going to pull up so many Bible verses um, concerning prayer, but I want to start with the very first one, which is so important. Now, I recommend everybody, everyone, especially if you are new to your relationship with God, to read the book of James. Listen to this. This is spiritual protocol. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Look at what it says in parentheses. Your false steps, your offenses. Your false steps, your offenses. A lot of times I point out people offenses. I was doing um, a deliverance call. There was a lady who joined the deliverance and um, God told me not to pray for her. God actually told me that this lady could not stand me. Okay. God actually told me that she had a lot of offense towards me. I told the lady this. Um, I could even tell when I came on the phone, she was showing half of her face. She looked annoyed, but she's asking me for prayer. Right. Um, I told her, I gave her instructions according to what God said. I'm talking and she's trying to over talk me. I'm like, I'm still talking. And then I got off the call with her because, baby, we done. She emailed me. She lied and said she brought up witchcraft. I didn't even tell her she did witchcraft. I said I didn't even mention witchcraft. But her personality was nasty. OK. Um, and so one thing you have to understand is that I'm always going to bring up things about you. Always. There are times where I play a game with people, especially people that do witchcraft. Um, and I've said this numerous times to stop reaching out to me. If you're not going to get on the call and really spill the beans and really go before God in prayer, God will tell me if you are sincere in your heart. It doesn't matter what you say, because I know how deep and deceptive witchcraft is. That don't work on me. OK, but listen to this. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses. So every time I correct you all and tell you you're not saved, every time I tell you all that you need to fast for your own marriage, I'm doing the right thing. And pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer. Listen to this of a righteous man in parentheses believer can accomplish much. When put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. But notice what it said. It's always a caveat. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Notice that it's not saying to go up to the altar every month and pray with snot running down, asking for prayer with snot running down your nose and you praying for the same stuff. It didn't say that. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Do you know how wicked how deceptive, how demonic, how malicious you got to be to go before somebody that truly served God and play games like you don't know what I'm talking about. Case in point, I'm going to give up and I'm going to give because I'm going to write books about my experiences with witches. 
very powerful books that's going to give people a lot of revelation. Um, I was praying with someone else. This was recently. I actually posted her testimony, right? She, the Holy Spirit came upon her and she started speaking in tongues. She said she had wanted to speak in tongues for two years. She was on the phone with me for two minutes and it happened. However, you know what's interesting? I said, repent for witchcraft. When I said repent for witchcraft, her eyes got like this. I said, what's going on? Are you, I said, do you want to end the call? She, no, 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 I'm shocked. What were we shocked about? The shock that I that I'm telling you to repent. What what are we talking about here? What it seemed like every Christian that's wicked, they always act like they don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? You gotta be truthful. If God is exposing you as a witch, by golly, you're a witch. Everybody loves Mark 11 24. I don't like that one though. I like it, but I like Mark 11:25. Listen to this, guys. And when you stay in praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. And when you stay in praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Release it. Let it go. Stop watching people that you don't like. Stop having a psychotic spirit. Go before God and repent wholeheartedly. And he will wash away your sins. Ask to be cleansed and purged. Ask him to wash you in his blood. Colossians 4 and 2. Devote yourself to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Notice what it says. Devote yourself to prayer. It did not say to constantly beg leaders. Okay, and play victim. It did not say that. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. That is what it says. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Confidence. First John 5 and 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. It takes confidence to pray a thing and actually believe it. This is why I tell you all, I have so much confidence in God that I'm going to be honest with you. When people come back and they apologize because they be like, oh, I thought you was prideful, but really it's confidence in God. Really, you know, it's this and it's that. The reason why people think I'm prideful is because they have low self-esteem. It's because no one has taught them how to be sold out to Christ. It's because there are a lot of parts of me is intimidating too many people. My presence is intimidating. My boldness, my righteousness and how I stand on business. I don't believe witchcraft will work on me. And if it does work on me, it's because because God wants to teach me a lesson. That's how I feel. I actually believe that. I actually do not believe that witchcraft is effective when you are truly a servant of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I actually believe that Jesus Christ is way more potent, way more powerful. You need to be afraid of the one who could destroy both your soul and your spirit. The devil can't do that. Another spiritual law. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer. I'm sorry, but in every situation by prayer and petition. So sometimes I've heard people say that you're not in faith if you keep praying about the same thing. That ain't true. That's not true. With Thanksgiving, I always give God Thanksgiving. Always present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It says, do not be anxious about anything. So when you're going to God, bind the spirit of anxiety, bind all nervousness. I do that. I bind the spirit of confusion. Spirits will speak to you. Even if you're in right standing, you have to understand this. Your environment matter. You could be on the phone praying with a witch and they could be sending stuff to you and you don't even know it. Witches have learned how to master how to pray and speak the word of God out of their mouth, but in their heart, they can curse you. I've posted the video. Listen to this. First Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray continually. Notice how all of these Bible verses are talking about what you need to do, not begging your pastor to pray for you. Notice what it's saying. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice all these Bible verses about prayer is leading you to Christ. 
It's leading you to your prayer closet. It is leading you to the secret place. This is how you build an altar of prayer in your home. Holy Spirit gave me a powerful revelation. He said, I pray so much in a particular room in my house, in the spirit realm, the house is full of script. The room is full of scriptures.